Number five, the fifth step of settling an estate. And this is one that sometimes takes a bit of time. It's gathering the assets and paying the expenses. And you think that might be pretty easy, right? Just find out where all the assets are. Well, it's not always that clear what the assets of the decedent were. So when you're settling an estate and you're gathering the assets, I sometimes say you're kind of like a private investigator in a way. You're looking through all the bank records, all the mail that comes to the house of the decedent. You're, you know, if the decedent was really well organized and had everything in a notebook and had everything laid out, great, your job's a lot easier. That often isn't the case. You may know of you know, there's one or two bank accounts, or like many people, there could be 10 bank accounts with one that was opened with $500 over here because they wanted to get a really good interest rate and nobody knows about that asset anymore. That's why I'm saying you put on the private investigator hat and you need to find all the assets. Maybe it's easy, maybe it's not. So you're going to take an inventory of all the assets. You're going to do your best to figure out what assets are there. And we call that an inventory. And, you know, it's not necessarily the type of inventory that's required in a probate, but you're going to list out what all the assets are, what the values were at the date of death, so that you know what is in this estate and where is it going to go. You've got personal property items, you know, stuff from the house. You've got cars. Um, you've got, you know, property or re real properties. Uh, there's, you know, bank accounts, investment accounts, 401 case. Oh, life insurance policies. And this is one of the assets, the life insurance policies. When you're gathering up the assets, you might completely miss because how would you know that there's a life insurance policy unless the decedent you know laid that out and gave you a list uh, i did want to share with you that there is a um a service it's called the life insurance policy locator service and i'm going to ask um that uh, one of my team put it in the chat here which is a service where you can log in, put in the decedent's information, and they will come back and let you know um, whether there's any life insurance policies. So that's that link is there in the chat now. So you're gathering up all the assets, finding out what is in this estate. You're, you need to know what the value of the assets. That's really easy with a bank account, not so easy with other things. For example, like a house, what's the value of the house? Well, if you're going to sell the house, you're going to know the value. If the house is going to be transferred to somebody, you're going to want to get an appraisal on that house. And the reason that that's really important to do in valuing the assets is that when you inherit an asset, it gets what's called an adjustment in tax basis. And typically what that means is it gets what we call a step up in tax basis. So the house was purchased years ago for a hundred thousand. The house is worth, you know, six hundred thousand dollars now. Whoever is inheriting that house, or if it's going to be inherited by a number of people and sold, it gets an adjustment, an upward adjustment in tax basis from about one hundred thousand up to six hundred thousand. Why is that beneficial? Well, if that house gets sold, let's say it's worth six hundred thousand, and it gets sold for six hundred thousand, then there's going to be zero capital gains tax paid on that increase in value because it got a step up or adjustment in tax value. So, getting an appraisal on real estate um, investment accounts really important. And in the state of Washington, community property gets a step up in basis, not just on the half, the decedent's half, but the couple. So the whole thing gets adjusted up, upward, which is very beneficial for the surviving spouse.